Good morning. So today I'm going to be doing a video on how to stop a poly tunnel from blowing away. So I've got a fair few videos on this subject already on my channel, but I was asked the other day about how I do indeed stop my poly tunnel from blowing away. And the time of year is coming up where many people, myself included, will be thinking about putting up either an additional or their first poly tunnel. So it's a very important subject. Okay, so why do you need to secure your poly tunnel? You really don't want it to blow away, okay? Uh, cause damage, it can need to put more time into you know, re-securing it. What you want to do is get your poly tunnel secured properly and then you can then say, yep, it's secured. I can rest easily, it's not going to blow away in a high wind. So I myself decided to try and defy the rule of securing a poly tunnel properly. And what I had was one of those little mini coal frames, mini greenhouses, and I didn't secure it properly and it ended up over the fence damaged in the winds that we had earlier in the year, probably about uh, two or three months ago. Now I have indeed noticed, I don't know if many of you out there have noticed the same, that we do, we do seem to be getting um, more blowy weather, at least in this part of the UK. So I think the subject of securing a polytunnel is a very, very important one indeed. So I'm going to show you how I've secured this polytunnel and um, it's withstood some relatively high winds by UK standards and if you check my older videos you'll see the much larger polytunnel there that is secured in a very similar way so I know that this works for larger polytunnels as well. Okay so I'm going to try and make this video as comprehensive as possible on the subject. So we're walking to the polytunnel here. So this is a feel-good UK polytunnel. I've spoke a lot about this before, so I won't go too much into it, but I really like it because it's got this hinged door, okay? Now, so what I've got is, I've got the polytunnel attached to a frame made of two by fours. So you can see that the polytunnel itself, the frame of the polytunnel is galvanized which I think is very important because yes you can get cheaper ones that aren't galvanized but you don't want it you know to rust okay so the galvanization will protect this <clears throat> at least for a time so let's have a look down here right so you can see the frame the bottom of the frame there look you see that and then excuse the mess there's the corners going up there so the actual polytunnel itself, the plastic of the polytunnel, is partly secured, you see, by these sort of uh, Velcro straps, okay? Now, I didn't think that was enough to secure it, so I've taken other measures, but we'll go into that later. So how indeed is it secured? Now, looking down here, in each corner, I've got a piece of 2x4, like this and the frame which i made to the same size as the frame of the polytunnel here so i put that all the way around and what i've done is secured the frame onto the wooden two by fours by using these cable ties they're pretty strong that's what i've used there and you can see the frame is screwed to these two by fours that are in the ground. So, hang on. You could if you wanted, excuse the red eye, I got something in my eye at work yesterday. Um, but um, <clears throat> you could if you wanted them posts, you could put, you could even concrete wooden posts in. You could even put concrete posts in and then drill your hole in the two by four similar to how you know you would secure like a metal gate to a wooden fence post something like that you really you could you could consider doing that and if you did do that then you know that would be a much longer sort of um it would last longer so that's also a, a consideration a thing of what you can indeed do but uh, so if you see the posts here now what i've done is all the wood involved the two by fours 
here, 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 and all the way around. I've painted them in wood preservative, okay? So there's all sorts you could use for this. Years ago, people used to use creosote, but uh, I don't think that's so readily available now. Um, this is just that cuprinol stuff uh, that I purchased. But uh, one of the best things I've found that you can use, and I've seen, I've done it myself when I put like fence posts in, you can coat the bottom of the, or indeed the whole case of this, the post in that bitumen stuff, that tarry stuff, barn paint would be another option. But you don't want to just uh, sink a post into the ground because, you know, even if it has been sort of, what do they call it, penetrated with that uh, stuff, you want to make it last as long as possible. So paint it in wood preservative, uh, that bitumen stuff, or if you use concrete, of course, that won't be an issue. Another option, of course, if you're going to use wooden posts is if you bring it all the way up, the concrete, um, rot is much less likely to happen. I'll just show you here, so you know these wooden fence posts, they do rot off. Um, the majority of the modern day ones, I think they're guaranteed for 15 years, but at uh, end of the day, the way that I look at it, if you're sticking a wooden post into wet soil, you know, rot is inevitable, either sooner or later. So uh, you see the concrete here has been brought all the way up to the top, a bit higher than the ground, and made in a slope down like that so that the water runs off so an even better option would be to you know treat the whole post entirely with wood preservative all that bitumen stuff so that the water can't penetrate bring the concrete up high with a slope and chances are it will last a lot longer this is an example of quite a typical sort of a uh, situation you'll find so this post here you see that's wibbly wobbly in the ground there so it's a fence post you know up against you've seen the grapevine before but uh, you've got to think you know that's straight in the soil there imagine the concrete was brought right up and the bitumen was on the bottom you know much more secure and longer lasting and yes it takes more time effort and indeed money at the time but uh, you know in 10 15 years time when you've got a rickety old post to change you'll probably wish that uh, you did do it the more secure method Right, so you've had a little bit of a lesson on how to uh, you know, put fence posts up like that. But uh, now, so just to recap, you can see in the corner, you've got your two by four frame. You've then got the post in the ground. You could either use two by four, four by four, whatever you want to use, but just make sure you treat it properly. And then simply the, the frame is strapped down all the way around using cable ties, okay? Right, so this is very important as well. How is the um, plastic cover of the polytunnel secured to the wooden frame? So let me indeed show you. So you can see the wooden two by four frame there. So you can see the cover of the polytunnel. It goes all the way down here. And you see this, look, plastic there, under there. And what I've done, this is old skirting board, or no, it's not, what am I talking about? It's not skirting board at all, um, architrave you know, that goes around door frames when one uh, does door frames. And um, you can see it's screwed there, look. So that's screwed onto. So it's secured by on the inside to the frame using the uh, Velcro straps. And then all the way around, I've got this architrave here. You can use any wood, you know, you can use battens, whatever. I just had these lying around, so I used them. And it's simply screwed in to the wooden frame all the way around. You want to do it all the way around really, just in case any wind you know, gets under it and rips bits off, okay? Make sure you're quite secure with it, all right? And I'll just show you here. This is a good feature of this polytunnel actually. I um, have got, you know, it's got like these little things here and I put that under and water drips in there. Then I proceed to put that in my uh, nettle tea compost for the garden right so all the way here look you can see the same again using this batten all nicely screwed on i prefer to use screws more than nails because you've got to think you know this this patch patrick this plastic could deteriorate so i might have to change it the chances are this plastic will deteriorate before the uh, galvanized frame of the polytunnel so i use screws that you can just i can just pop out if i want to put uh, a new cover on and then screw it back on and that indeed will be secure so you can see i'm going all the way around there right that's the front or the front of the polytunnel that's the door i'll show you this hinge door okay just in case People aren't well acquainted with my polytunnel, but uh, so you can see the hinges. There you go. So we got a 
There you go, a hinge there, look. And we go all the way down. And a hinge there. So it just slots on. And I much prefer this over like the plastic sort of zip doors because they're less likely to flap around and break either if they're pulled too hard or deterioration or the wind catches it. Looking at the inside, you can indeed see that. And uh, it's the frame of the door has like a, it's a plastic cover that you put over like you would a sock or a glove and it simply goes over like that and you think at the bottom it's like yeah it's like a velcro thing again that you then secure and because it's on the inside you know you're not going to get wind in there to break it and you've got like these little uh, hinges like not hinges sorry these latches whatever keeping it secured of which I recommend you keep them both secured like that in case you get a wind that gets into it and rips it off you can see as I go around the side you can see all of this is secured with the wood. It goes to the wood all the way around the back as well. And the other thing you can do if you really want is you can, where, the, where it overlaps like this, the plastic from the cover, you can dig a hole and you can bury that in the ground if you want to go the next step of making it more secure. But uh, I didn't think that was, you know, necessary here but if you live in a very open space you may indeed consider doing that so what I've done is you can see around the front here where the plastic went under I didn't make the neatest job of it in the world but I cut it off using you can use scissors or a Stanley knife make sure you take care and don't hurt yourself or anybody else but uh, I cut that off there because it had all bits of you know the plastic that came to here once the cover was on flapping about getting in the way and I thought you know, shall I dig a trench? No, nah, I'll just cut it off at the bottom. So that's one thing that uh, I indeed have done. Okay, so one thing that, uh, you know, if you're in an area where really, really high winds, you know, could happen, if you know some high winds are coming, you know, keep the door closed. Because, you know, if a really high wind got in here, if it was strong enough, although it's, you know, it could happen that the wind could indeed just rip the whole thing you know with the plastic secured at the bottom rip it and damage it so that's that's one thing if you live in a really really sort of high wind area you know high altitude or a part of the world where you know the you know the wind is higher so if you know a strong wind is coming you could keep the door closed because you can imagine you know wind getting in here and just going pow like that so you've got to got to take some care this is not necessarily about securing, but um, you can get this like sort of spongy tape if you want to call it that. And because the, the galvanised frame can get rather warm, you put it like that on the bit that's where the plastic cover is touching. And what that indeed does is uh, the heat from the, the frame won't, uh, you know, damage and sort of trying to think of the right word, damage the plastic, deteriorate the plastic frame of the plastic cover rather of the polytunnel. So this is tape here that you can buy white stuff and put it there. Okay, so uh, I hope you can see me okay here. I'll just stand back a bit. So the polytunnel here was about 160 pounds, very much worth the extra money for the reasons I've, I've explained. Um, you know, the cost of two by four it's not that cheap, okay? And uh, you can get hold of two by four. We you know if you look at sort of auctions markets or whatever, you can quite often get to two by four or suitable wood quite cheap or reuse some wood. But I'd, I recommend that you, you know, use good quality wood from the start. Don't use rotten wood. You want to make sure that it's there because, you know, this polytunnel could be standing for, for some time and you really want to have it good quality, um, good quality construction and good quality secured from the start. Now, something I want to tell you about that I wish I had done, and I, I you know, I, it didn't occur to me, which is very silly, uh, until after I did it, because I put this polytunnel up whilst I was relatively busy, and um, you forget things, so it's my job to tell you. Now, the wooden frame... Although I've got it protected with wood preservative, is still onto the ground okay as you could see there now what i wish i'd done is put a course of bricks or blocks under it so that the two by fours are not directly touching 
the earth all right now i could do that if i really wanted because all i would do is unscrew the frame from the post here and then upend it each way and then put a course of bricks around it now i may consider doing that this uh, this winter although i probably won't now but the trick is is to do it right in the first place so bricks blocks you can use engineering bricks you know soft reds blocks block paving you could use you know whatever really you could um put like um a damp course around you know like that that stuff that they use when they do the oversight on brickwork you know so they what they do is they put like a few courses of bricks above the ground and then they put like a damp course in which is like a black bit of sort of plasticky stuff to stop the the moisture from going up the brickwork so you could consider putting that under but uh, I'd recommend you know underneath the wood here that you put you no know, bricks blocks damp course um, something just to give it an extra bit of protection to the uh, you know from the moisture going into the wood oh well the music started a little dance so I hope that I've made this video as comprehensive as um, I did possibly can so if there's any questions please feel free to secure your own polytunnel properly and ask the questions down below as well but to just a on a final thought something that I always do when I leave the polytunnel door closed just in case any strong wind manages to get in on the inside in there what I do is just put a bucket of soil or something there like that just to give that an extra degree of protection so there we go